this is Joel and let's continue with the next topic which I want to cover here it's gonna be a very quick video I believe uh, which will be your IGMP snooping right so we talked about um, you know a bit of introduction with multicast we then went on to talk about just IGMP right mainly from our outer perspective version 1 version 2 version 3 but then we'll look into the L2 side of multicast right and when we talk about L2 side of multicast the uh, something which really stands out here is the IGMP snooping right I kind of touched about this a little bit in my introduction right I posed in a question right as to how are the switches able to forward multicast traffic because switches always forward traffic based on L2 you know MAC addresses but in this case right they will have to forward based on the L2 or uh, multicast MAC addresses and multicast MAC addresses as you see it will they are, they'll never be learned by the switch right because the source learning mechanism of switch will never kick in because this multicast MAC addresses will never be in the source field of any you know layer to packet right so how how will a switch ever be you know able to forward packets right uh, or uh, will be able uh, will be ever able, uh, able to forward multicast packets that's what we are going to see now so IGMP snooping basically kicks in here so let me just get this yeah so uh, let's imagine you have a switch here right and then you have a bunch of you know plants right and then here you have your video server the multicast source I'm just gonna write as multicast source right and this guy is sending data down here and he's sending it to a particular group let's assume 239.1.1.1 and corresponding to that we are going to have like a, a big ass uh, you know mac address right it's going to be something like um, i don't know 0100.5e01 and dot dot whatever the huge mac address multicast mac address it's not normal mac address multicast mac address so your video server will be sending these packets onto the switch switch is going to get anxious switch because switch really doesn't know what this is right this MAC address switch really doesn't know why because it never learned from any of the clients here right because it this particular MAC address will never be present in the source field of any packet coming into the switch right so how does this work so the layer 2 switches right they are they are simple devices they learn the source MAC address or in fact in this case they learn the multicast source MAC address right by let's say spying on the packets right by spying on the multicast packets right because we have talked about when you enable multicast in a network there are certain packets which are going to be flowing in this direction what are those the report packet right the membership report package we saw in the previous video we saw we did a packet capture and we saw that there were membership report packets which were going you know in this direction we also saw that there were leave group packets remember they also basically go in the same direction from the client upwards towards the you know multicast uh, upstream router or switch whatever it is right so using these packets don't you think the switch can learn something right again these packets obviously will not have the multicast MAC address in the source field but at least it will be there in the rest of the packet because it's a in this packet or that's quite as a layer to frame right the the this particular MAC address right is going to be present here in one of these fields so the switch is basically le gonna learn that okay I'm getting a membership report uh, from along this interface and it seems to have this particular MAC address in the in the frame so maybe this particular client is listening to or is interested in this particular stream right that kind of an understanding or intelligence is built into the switch so that's how the switch is able to understand um, and once it does that it will start creating you know a MAC table right? we, we know the MAC table or CAM table right so the CAM table is nothing but you're gonna have your interface sorry uh, you're gonna have your uh, MAC address and you're gonna have the interface so that is going to be built so here let's say you know this uh, to make it simple I'm just gonna call this guy as you know this MAC address as A so it's gonna learn that this multicast MAC address A right is basically used along this interface whatever is this let's say this is Ethernet 0 slash 0 so it's gonna make this mapping right so 
this is this is step one but then what about you know when i send a leave packet or leave group right when i send a leave group the switch will understand that okay this uh, i'm getting a i'm getting the same mac address as part of a leave group packet which means that maybe this client no longer wants the ma the multicast packets so it's going to then you know go to this particular row and delete this particular you know data from the camp table so that way you know it, it doesn't have to kind of like send the multicast down you know to that port again right that's that's the intelligence which is built in <coughs> right so now that's that's basically your ijp snooping in short but obviously there's a lot other stuff which you know if you if you want to explore you can do have uh, the book which i showed you last time uh, you know there's there's like probably a uh, lot of pages over there where you know the author goes through each and every scenario in detail uh, you know uh, uh, and uh, it's a very good read but for our lab i think this is pretty much enough to uh, to get a glimpse of you know what we are going to do so let's get to the lab and try to understand some of the packet captures here let me just grab this okay so i think we are good so let's get my i here all right so um, now the thing here is um, it uh, the because we are doing this on eve right uh, the other thing okay before we get to the lab what i want to say is igmp snooping is not a standard you know rfc protocol right so uh, even if you google for the rfcs you probably will get like best practice recommendations for implementing you know igmp snooping so different vendors you know they kind of implement using this best practices in their own way some of them do it in hardware some of them do it in software so probably it might not be very universal you know cisco might do it one way and probably there might be a different vendor who will do it in a different way right so um, it's um, this is a very interesting protocol but at the same time you know it's um, it's a bit cluttered out there um, and what we are doing obviously we are doing it using a iol image uh, which probably is a very lightweight image right With, without much processing so uh, whatever you see here in this lab probably not might not match exactly with your uh, you know hardware uh, with your physical hardware so if you have access to a physical hardware i would suggest you to kind of try this out um, on that right instead of doing it on a uh, virtual lab um, and that being said let's quickly jump on to the configs here so what do we have so we have the 192 168 1.0 subnet here right um, so we have R1 and we have H2 and H3 and we have a switch here. Okay, so we are down here. Let's start with the first uh, config. So before that, let's see what is happening on the switch, right? So let's clear the screen. Show IP IGMP snooping. There you go. So you can see the snooping is enabled by default. On a Cisco layer 2 switch again this is a 15.6 uh, version I guess but um, yeah it's enabled by default over here report separation is enabled by default remember this we talked about report separation in the previous uh, uh, video in IGMP v2 right so the report separation is enabled by default here um, I'll, I'll also kind of show you how this kind of creates an issue later uh, but yeah for now you can see that it is enabled uh, it's enabled on the VLAN one, which is the default VLAN, right? Um, so that's good. Uh, yeah. So coming back to the report suppression is enabled, uh, which means that switch will only forward what one membership report from the host to the router port, right? We did that in IGMP V2. Uh, the IGMP immediate um, uh, leave is disabled, I guess. Uh, do we have that? Probably. Yeah. Here. The IGMP immediate leave is disabled, right? Which we again talked about in IGMP v2, right? So uh, the immediate uh, leave message is disabled. So you can see the difference between, you know, the router and the switch, right? The implementation is slightly different because in router, I believe it was enabled. Anyway, so uh, now what we'll do is we'll go about uh, doing a debug of IP IGMP snooping router, right? We have turned on this which means we are good to go on the router and uh, let's go to r1 
and on R1 what we'll do is we'll first uh, go and enable IP multicast what multicast routing right next let's go to the Ethernet interface which is 0 slash 1 my topology is on the right uh, sorry on the left side I'm just going as per that I'm enabling PIM sparse mode all right and once we enable the PIM sparse mode what do we want to see next so we have enabled the debugs here right so we should start seeing some debugs we can see it has received uh, um, you know the uh, received IGMP pack on VLAN 1 on the port Ethernet 0 slash 1 so this is a 0 slash 1 right so it has received uh, you know obviously it will be receiving your IGMP queries on that particular port so when it sees that it is receiving an IGMP query on the port it understands that this particular port is probably connected to a router because the IGMP queries or the membership queries are only coming from the router right it never comes from the host so that's how switch is able to understand that this particular port right you can see that port ethernet 0 slash 1 is being learned as R port we can even check that so we can check R port is basically a router port right show IP IGMP snooping and if I do probably query error right there you go so it is able to understand that this particular port and this is the IP address 192.168.1.254 right coming from here is basically ethernet 0 slash 1 so this is what I was telling right switch is able to intelligently understand all of this or it's able to learn this and again coming back to it might not be the same in all platforms or all vendors might not do it the same way so uh, probably if it's a very cheap switch then they might not even have IGMP snooping enabled it might you know basically flood in all the IGMP, uh, multicast package to all the ports so it depends it's a very good feature to have though going forward uh, what we have done so we have enabled uh, have we enabled debugs on this guy probably not let's enable debugs on I think I've done okay I've done that cool so now what we'll do is we'll get our H2 or H1 whatever it is we'll go and get this guy to join the so let's do cons t let's clear the screen a bit let's see what happens now so let's do interface ethernet i think it is 0 slash uh, 1 and i'll say ip igmp join group and we'll do it 239.1.1.1 so when i do this let's observe what's going to happen on my switch right the debugs let's clear the screen or let's give it right here okay that's fine so i did that now let's observe in a few seconds we should start seeing some debugs on my switch do i have everything here let me check if i have an ip address on this uh, okay that looks good 192.168.1.1 give it a few seconds all right uh, my bad i had not enabled the debugs for uh, the snooping which i just now did and you can see um, I have received the corresponding debugs for that so it's saying that I received the switch is telling I received IGMP v2 report from you know for this particular uh, let's just pull this to the left for this particular group which is 239.1.1.1 right so you can see the logs here it is telling I have received a IGMP v2 report then it is adding the v2 group uh, you know member port so you can see the ethernet 0 slash 2 port is now getting added to this particular group isn't that amazing it is able to learn that right so now if I do something like again if I do the same command which we did earlier uh, show IP IGMP snooping or not this right let me do something like uh, show IP IGMP snooping but let's do groups this time there you go see it is able to understand that the 239.1.1.1 is the multicast group and the client which is on ethernet 0 slash 2 right this interface that is h2 is interested in this particular group right so now it will be able to forward any um, you know packets which are destined for this group right based on the mac address right it will be able to forward because it has learned because if the switch is able to learn this obviously it can also understand the mapping of this mac address sorry this ip address with its corresponding multicast mac address right so when it receives a frame for this particular multicast group it will now peacefully forward it so that's what you see there uh, now probably we could go ahead and 
do something else let's go to the other for other switch and let's enable it over there as well and see what's going to happen now interface ethernet 0 slash 0 i guess no sorry 0 slash 1 and let's go and do the same thing which we did here let's uh, let's say we want to join you know to the same group again the switch will get you can see here the switch is getting the debugs telling that you know we have one more guy who wants to join now if i do the groups command you can see here the both the both the hosts have actually appeared down here right both the hosts have appeared now the problem here is because we are using this virtual devices there is one interesting problem which you might face you can see that uh, whatever i spoke about in my uh, igmp v2 section right the report suppression right it is getting kicked in here ideally in a physical hardware this should not happen at least in cisco's good physical hardware this should not happen right because uh, when you add a switch what happens is the um, igmp reports or the membership reports which are being sent by the you know in this case the clients right up to the switch right what is going to happen is the switch is going to forward those igmp reports to the cpu to its cpu right so it is going to intercept unlike well, in our traditional igmp v2 which we did in the previous video what we saw was the igmp reports which are sent by one host were visible at the other host right so h2 whatever he sends was visible at h3 h3 whatever he sends was visible at h2 right and as a result they were able to understand that okay my partner has already sent the igmp reports i am going to cancel mine right so that kind of a behavior should not be seen on a switch uh, here because uh, that is a very that is a um, that is that is basically uh, kept here because the meat of the whole discussion here is that the switches the switch should somehow you know build some kind of a intelligence to figure out which multicast groups are connected on which you know interfaces right so if uh, if we end up suppressing this membership reports then the switch will never be able to understand that you know there might be another port which is interested right in this particular multicast traffic so it's um, in, when you talk about a switch right or implementation of igmp snooping in switch generally you know the um, uh, the membership reports are not suppressed right so you you basically send the membership reports and they are kind of punted to the cpu and the cpu will now which is on the switch right will use those report messages to build the cam table which i explained earlier right but here it doesn't seem to appear that way because it's a virtual you can see if i enable probably here debug um, ip igmp you should start seeing those cancel uh, messages right where uh, the only one of the guy will be sending the igmp reports right uh, both of them are not sending here because this is a virtual uh, uh, you know this, this we are doing this on eve right on iol images so uh, that could be the reason but uh, in a physical hardware you would actually not see that in a physical hardware you would you would see the membership reports which are being sent by both the host going up to the cpu of the switch and you know uh, both of them will be sending the igmp reports right so that's there uh, so that's mainly it i mean i think this is one thing which i wanted to show you you can see here uh, the switch is intelligent enough so this is this is basically the meat of the discussion right the igmp snooping basically works because of this it is able to look at the membership query messages coming from the router and understand that you know this is the port where the router is connected it is able to look at the membership report messages coming from these ports and understand that these are the two ports which are interested for this particular multicast group now from now on whenever it receives a you know multicast stream it can intelligently switch the traffic you know to the corresponding port and not send it or flood it to all the ports because imagine if we had like 10 or 15 ports here and if i'm sending the multicast stream to all the ports then it would be very some optimal right it won't be optimal so the learning of the multicast mac address is very important but the only thing which you need to concentrate here is the learning doesn't happen in a traditional source learning way rather the igmp snooping what it does is it it enables our switch to learn about uh, the various multicast MAC addresses by snooping on these various uh, you know multicast control messages or IGMP messages mainly right your qu uh, query message your uh, membership report message and so on right so hope that was clear thanks guys for watching bye